Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we are looking at a German ship. So, of course, when I saw that happening in my inbox, first thing I was going to go, yes, a new German ship, we'll check it out. And the second thing I was looking at, hmm, looks like a battle cruiser. And then the third thing I realized is that it's classified as a cruiser, and it's tier 9. Oh dear. <laughs> So, uh, if you've been around here for a while, uh, you probably know that if you're new. Uh, I am not a massive fan of super cruisers because they tend to combine um, not quite battleship firepower with uh, very much not battleship armor plating, but very much battleship maneuverability, <laughs> which is sort of the worst of all worlds. And uh, I am not a massive fan of this type of ship, but it's German. And uh, I was willing to give it a try because so far we've had the uh, we've had a couple of O class uh, cruisers at this tier, and uh, I wanted to see what this thing was all about. So the Admiral Schröder. Uh, let's take a very quick look at the blurb that is here because that says it is some hypothetical surface radar design from the late 1920s, and uh, that would have used uh, 305 millimeter main guns. Now, these are much older 305 millimeter main guns than you normally find around here. So for example, the Odin at tier eight, which is a ship that I'm very much in favor of, uh, has 305 millimeter main guns, but on a much more modern version that what we find here. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. So it, it's some form of paper ship. Um, that, that never existed and that was never built. And as such, it's not an awful lot else we can say about it. Admiral Schröder himself was at least a uh, relatively famous admiral in the First World War and was serving under the Kaiser. And was and as such, and he was, was given a, a nobility, so he was Admiral von Schröder actually. And as such, this is quite fitting because, like I said, these guns are um, a little bit out of their time period. So let's take a very quick look at how this thing compares, because uh, we've got a couple of things that we can we can check. Uh, now, uh, we're not going to look at the Odin. No need to do that. But we look at the Aegir at tier 9 and see how the Admiral Schröder compares. So first things first, uh, the Admiral Schröder gets an engine boost. Okay, that's relatively unusual, but welcome for something that absolutely positively is a very, very large and very squishy cruiser. <laughs> and at the same time uh, has some firepower in the secondary, so it does need to, to, to battle at close to mid-range. Having a bit of a speed boost is not a terrible thing. And we get a better secondary overload. So this is the secondary overload three. That gives us 30% speed and range versus the A-Gears 2 for 25. It's not a huge difference, to be honest. The, um, the detail, the, the thing's going to be in the details. So first things first, uh, fewer hit points, but otherwise pretty much an A-Gear hull. Uh, she's a bit slower than the A-Gear on the get-go and a bit less maneuverable, but uh, so somewhat in the same ballpark as that thing. Now here, here we come... Uh, here we come to the uh, the point of the guns. Now the Aegir has the Odin's guns, the 56 caliber length uh, in the 1939 turret because it's an old class. This on the Admiral Schröder, on the other hand, these are tier five guns. This is the kind of stuff you find on the Derflinger or on the Kaiser at tier four. <laughs> these are uh, these are very much First World War vintage. Uh, turrets. Now I did have a quick peek at the World of Warships wiki, the PC version of it, and I think it's on some slightly modernized turret mount, which uh, which makes sense if we're looking at the seven degrees per second tra traverse, but the guns themselves are still very much World War One vintage. And uh, as such, uncharacteristically crap for German guns. So uh, despite the relatively low caliber, they are not great. Uh, the, the, and you only get eight of them because you get the four, four twin turret layout rather than the triple turrets that we normally find these later vintage ones in. That said, unlike the Aegir, she gets actual 150 millimeter secondaries. And we'll have a quick look where they're mounted in a second. But uh, these, uh, these are 
have a bit of a long reload, but uh, a good range, and obviously they're German 150s, so uh, against destroyers quite uh, quite dreadful and uh, dangerous, and as especially once you have the engine uh, the engine boost, the uh, secondary overload running. She also gets uh, some form of 128mm uh, uh, secondaries, which is usually what you find on the Grosser Kurfürst, first, uh, on the auto secondaries. And these are, I mean, we don't know the details. It does say it's a 61 caliber length, but she does get more than the Aegir. And uh, they look very, very similar. So I'm just gonna assume it's, this, it's the Aegir's auto secondaries. So on top of the, we have worse guns than an Aegir, but at least we get the regular 150s. Uh, in return, she doesn't get any torpedoes, which is a bit of a bummer because one of the one of the things that you really need as a German battle cruiser in order to make an impact, you have to, you know, ambush people sort of, which is quite difficult if you're in a ship that's quite visible. But uh, you sort of have to make your way into an in, into a, a position where you can. I take something on one one v one, but then you have to kill it quickly, because the the armor plating on the ship is not great, and having no torpedoes means you're entirely relying on your guns. The AA is, well, for all intents and purposes, the same really as on the Aegir, and uh, the concealment's a bit better. So they have realized, yes, this can be a little bit of a problem. The thing is, this is still a 10 kilometer base concealment. So even with a concealment build, we're by no means a sneaky super cruiser. So uh, let's have a quick look around, uh, just over the fence, at the Prinz Ruprecht, because the Prinz Ruprecht, uh, unlike the Admiral Schröder, is an actual battle cruiser. That doesn't mean the Prinz Ruprecht has great armor, but at least has armor of sorts, whereas the Admiral Schröder very much doesn't. It's a cruiser. It's got cruiser armor. Yes, it's got thick cruiser armor, but this is a tier 9 ship, and she has a pretty low hit point pool. So comparing her to the... Um, and the Prince Ruprecht, which has better armor and has has a significantly larger hit point pool, and uh, obviously also has better guns. But if we're looking at the uh, the secondary, the secondaries uh, they are very similar. So it's basically the same 150s that you, uh, at least for all intents and purposes, that you'd find on the Prince Ruprecht. Slight, slight more range. And obviously the Prince Ruprecht still has the 105s for the auto secondaries, so not quite as powerful, but the Prince Ruprecht gets a lot of sea mines. And yes, these are sea mines. They are uh, they can be overtaken by French destroyers. <laughs> so <laughs> well, on the intents and purposes, those are sea mines. The AA on the Prince Ruprecht is total garbage. But then again, the AA on the Admiral Schröder is very much still average, so it's not an AA ship of any sorts. So what does that leave us with? Well, uh, let's take a quick look where these secondaries are, because one of the big hopes that I had was that you could maybe use the 150s uh, effectively, but uh, in reality, it's it's sort of an extended Odin setup. The Odin uh, the Odin only has two turrets, but they're all centerline mounted, whereas uh, the Admiral Schröder has three. The problem is that the two forward ones, uh, as you can see here, right behind. Uh, right behind the, uh, the B turret, uh, they're side mounted. So you can always ever get six on target. Well, you, given you don't need to rotate them all around all that much, but um, for, for all intents and purposes, she's got the same secondary firepower on the 150s as the Odin does. And she doesn't get any torpedoes and she's a tier nine ship, which means she gets into tier 10 battles and it's a bit chunky. Uh, the rest here are the very, very good 128 millimeter auto secondaries. Now, you can set this ship up, and we come, we'll talk about the camouflage in a minute. I, I, I do realize that you're probably all scratching your heads by now and say, Terry, what have, are you drunk? <laughs> I, I actually have stopped drinking alcohol for health reasons, had to, but um, no, I am not. Uh, yes, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the elite bonus, you can try to do something about the, the armor, but really don't. It's not worth it. The ship's not got great armor. It's effectively cruiser armor or big cruiser armor if you want. But um, anything you'll encounter at tier 8 and 9 is going to absolutely shred you to bits. Uh, that has 200, uh, 205 or 200 millimeter higher guns. So really it's, uh, it's, not, it's not much. 
And in as such, you'd really want to get the secondary gun specialization because the secondaries is all you have. Like, forget about the main guns. They are, I mean, you can do some damage with them, obviously, but you have to fight with the secondaries if you want to get anything done in the ship. So uh, secondary reload it is. Now the camouflage. Let's look at the historical camouflage. I mean, it doesn't look great for a German camo. I think they are, uh, I'm not sure what's with the slightly Japanese green tint here, but um, this is your standard battleship camo, which means you get a couple of hit points. Okay, main battery firing range, nah, you don't need it because the dispersion is absolutely atrocious. These are tier four guns, for goodness sake, in tier nine. Uh, uh, maximum, maximum dispersion on the mains, yeah, not making any difference. You're not doing anything with your main guns in this thing, at least not at long range, so dispersion doesn't matter. And torpedo damage reduction, which doesn't matter at all, which means the historical cabo is completely useless. Completely. Don't, don't buy it. You literally don't buy it. Buy, get, put the seaborne assault in and you actually have better more relevant stats for the ship than with the historical camo. The only camo that's worth anything, and that's why I'm sailing with it, uh, despite my personal misgivings when it comes to style, is the um, distinctly Dutch looking. <laughs> Where have I seen this before? Hang on, let's take a quick peek, shall we? Because I'm, I really think I've seen this before. Um, give me something Dutch. Uh, what have we here? Like a like a seven provincian, didn't that did that thing have an alternate camo? Hmm. Um, I'm not sure. Was it in the was it on the Groningen? It doesn't seem to have an alternate camo either. Uh, these are all the historical ones. I've seen this before. Was it on the Tromp? Uh, not quite. I've seen something that has this kind of garland hanging on it. Uh, not sure where though. Was it on the Gaudenloo? No. Nah. I can't remember, but uh, if you can remember, please leave me a comment because I'm sure I've seen this thing before. So uh, let's get back to where we were. Oh, German T9 cruisers. Uh, I I've seen this camo before with the like the, the green tassels on the side and the uh, the little the little flaglets hanging everywhere. And I thought it was on a Dutch ship, but I uh, can't quite can't quite spot it at this point. Um, anyhow, uh, yeah, it looks terrifying, or rather terrible. <laughs> Terrifying in the sense of that probably uh, the enemy crew upon seeing this thing sailing into battle and coming at them are uh, just, you know, going to laugh so hard <laughs> that they don't get a chance to shoot back until they're in secondary range. Uh, but yes, this is the only permanent camo that makes any sense whatsoever because this thing gives you main battery firing range. Okay, we don't care about that. Ship hit points would have been much appreciated here. But it gives a 6% range on the secondaries and 4% surface detection. And you need a concealment build in this thing because this has cruiser armor and health and gets shut down extremely quickly by battleship caliber shells. So that's why it looks like this. Uh, equipment wise, you also, curiously enough, don't get the usual German secondary module in slot one. So instead, given that this is the only thing that makes any sense, I mean, you could you, you could go the um, you, you could go with uh, auxiliary mod one for for secondary range. I've actually chosen to go for the um, secondary battery mod one for the fifteen percent reload of the secondaries, because the main guns are really really not great <laughs> and having your having your 150s reload a bit faster when the um, when when the uh, the skill is not active is a good thing that said uh, auxiliary mod is very much a good choice as well it gives you a little extra edge on the range and stacks very nicely with everything else so it's really a, a choice between those two but you don't get the uh, the standard German module I'll show you which one I mean in fact let's check if the a gear gets it uh, no, the Aegir doesn't get it either. So, oh, it's it's just a battleship module? That could be. Let's have a look at the Prince Ruprecht. Yeah, this one's the one I'm talking about. Uh, the secondary battery mod 2, which gives you range and dispersion, 10% range and 10% dispersion on both the secondaries and the auto secondaries. This is the module we should be able to fit on the Schröder. Unfortunately, we can't because reasons. Because it's not a battleship, because it's a cruiser, and because, yeah... <laughs> Reasons. So you're stuck with the second best choice, choice, which is nowhere near as good because it's only half as good, or you take the 15% reload of the 
of the 150s. And yes, you want, you absolutely definitely uh, want the concealment module. Don't be tempted into getting the steering gear mod too. You are not going to survive out there for a minute if you are spotted out in the open and some enemy battleships start lining up at you. And you're not even going to get into brawling range. So, and you're not going to be able to dodge anything. So concealment it is. Um, it's really what you need. And yes, I understand it's useless after the initial after the initial get-go of the battle, because it's only there to get you into a, into a position more quickly before you get spotted. That's all it's for. And then after that, forget about it. Anyway, um, as usual, I have played with, uh, two, with two setups, one with a non-hit permanent camo, just the standard Seaborn Assault and a regular commander, and I have actually put von Hippa in here. Uh, although we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So the two, the two skill, the three skills that you really want, or the four skills that you really want out of von Hipper, the uh, armament repair expert, because the secondary turrets tend to get shot off quite a bit, and like I said, you need those. Uh, the sixth sense very much, because knowing how many people are targeting you in this thing is crucial. Knowing when to when to turn tail and run or get get behind cover. Is a, is a very, very useful thing to have. Uh, you obviously don't need the marksman skill, so that's a little wasted. And honestly, I don't feel the recon skill on this ship. Uh, I'd rather try to regain as much hit points as I possibly can, because also uh, von Hipper, obviously, we're not taking the battlefield support, which means we only get one sonar, which means uh, the 50% cooldown is completely wasted on this one. So the rest is a, is a HP tank build. And... Um, and I mean, you, you could be tempted to take Adrenaline Rush and it not, it's not a terrible choice because honestly, if you're getting yourself set on fire, um, you either hide and, and stick it out or and wait until you get to heal up or you're dead anyway, at which point you may as well go, go down in a slightly more brightly burning flame of glory. <laughs> Uh, obviously, close quarters combat expert. Minus 20% dispersion on the guns is essential. And the APCS Plus is usually quite a menace on the German guns. Unfortunately, these 305s are tier 4 guns. Or if you want to be generous, tier 5 guns. And they're pretty crap at tier 9 and <laughs> tier 10 games. Uh, I have put the horizontal protection expert plus, uh, not just not plus, just regular on, simply because there's nothing else that makes sense. She doesn't get any torpedoes. And you're not going to sit a an awful lot of things with these guns, so um, don't really need that. So boosting what little armor you have is not terrible. Right then, um, as you probably can already hear, I am not overly impressed by this ship. Now, so the thing is, with German ships, I'm having relatively high standards, because you can get things like the Prinz Ruprecht out <laughs> for free. So if you're, if you're putting a German premium out there, that's sort of at the cruiser end of the battle cruiser scale, uh, it really needs to shine for me to, you know, like it. And the one sweet spot that I have in it, and that's a battleship classified wise, at least is the Odin at tier eight, because A, it's tier eight, B, it's small, C, it's got, yes, all the guns, and uh, it's got lots of, it's got some torpedoes and they're good range and all these things. So, well, Let's, uh, let's see the Admiral Schröder in action, and um, I'll give you a bit of an impression how this thing plays. So, round number one, no APCS, no deck protection, no historical camo, standard consumables, regular commander. Obviously, we're in a tier 10 game because, you know, it's tier 9, and tier 9 matchmaking means you are facing Yamatos. But fortunately for us, uh, there's only one Yamato in the enemy team. And there's a Marseille talking about bad super cruisers. <laughs> I, I did not enjoy that ship. <laughs> but uh, I mean, if there's one thing that the Marseille is kind of good at is killing enemy cruisers. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and then we've got a, uh, a lone uh, Yodo and Shimakaze gearing another Shima and a Fletcher. So lots of destroyers on this domination map. Where are we playing on Sea of Fortune? Lots of small islands, very destroyer friendly map this. Now, if you're in a destroyer and you see anything German, uh, 
then you're probably giving it a bit of a birth because a these things tend to have tend to have secondaries b these things tend to have torpedoes of their own which means rushing them is generally a terrible idea unless it's a regular line battleship but most importantly these things have a lot and lots of 150 millimeter secondaries with german armor piercing on them so um I am spawning with Smallland and we are gonna go for C Cup. Uh, this is very much a every man for, them, for themselves sort of map. But um, I'm gonna keep to the. I'm switched to high explosive because we're likely going to spot an enemy destroyer. And while these are relatively crap 305mm guns, they will still over penetrate a destroyer at ranges that I'm gonna be fighting them. So HE it is, and we'll see if the Smallland can scout as a DD. And I'm sailing around the outside. With the engine boost up, this thing's actually pretty quick, so uh, that's quite nice. And it's the Marseille, so of course I did need the armor piercing here, um, but there is a destroyer in, in C. So we'll go back to up, and there's the Shimakaze. Okay, so we need to slow down Koshima Torps, and uh, we are going to get the... Is he stopping? Going to get this... What is he doing, Shima? <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining, but uh, you do you. Uh, so I've got the sonar running, so I shouldn't be I shouldn't be surprised by Shima torpedoes, and uh, yes, with with the secondary overload, we have uh, we have uh, positively positively Atlantico levels of uh, of range on these 150s, and uh, unfortunately Shima has uh, decided to run away, and I think Smallland has either just taken a shot from the Marseille and hasn't paid attention. Or has taken a couple of Shima drops, but he is about dead. So um, I'm gonna go in there and try and deal with the Marseille. Now Marseille's got the sonar up. That's probably for Smallland. I don't think he was concerned about torpedoes for me, but he obviously doesn't know that I don't have torpedoes. So um, I engine boost up. I need to get into point blank range of that Marseille. The problem is, um, well, the Marseille has, re while, while being a relatively terrible cruiser, and there you see. The absolute n nothingness that the, um, the 305s do are doing, the Marseille can hurt me right back. So, uh, and that thing reloads pretty darn quickly if he needs to. So, as you can see, I am losing a close range brawl with the Marseille right now, um, just because of the uh, sheer lack of armor. I'm trying to tempt him to fire at my belt, but uh, I, I'm not. I'm not even sure that my belt armor has a chance to uh, to deflect. Uh, yeah, ow, uh, to deflect that. So. He is shredding me right now, and um, his only downfall is that I've got the secondary overload ready, and I think he, uh, and I think his guns are uh, are not going to be ready in time for another salvo. So, oh no, there it comes. Okay, ooh, that was close. <laughs> Couple more hits uh, that were not going into the main belt, and I'm on 2,000 hit points. So that was an equal fight uh, with with the Marseille, and that tells you a lot if uh, a German ship struggles to take out a Marseille. <laughs> anyway, uh, the game's over at this point uh, because we are holding all three cups um, and uh, there are two destroyers left and one battleship. So that's, that's the Yamato. But uh, he's being chased down by two of our destroyers around A cup and the enemy destroyers are chasing down our battleship and paid attention to what that was. But I've, uh, I can finally restore a little bit of my hit points, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna head into B cup, and see if I can. Oh, it's a friendly Yamato as well. So yeah, he's just gonna get bullied. This this is not fun if you're getting just bullied by destroyers, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. You might as it's might as well just not even try. <laughs> uh, just close your eyes, and it'll get it'll be over with. But um, uh, yeah, he's he's, he's gonna die. Uh, that's a Shimakaze and a half. What was that? Shima? Black Shima? Something like that? Yeah, Shima and Black Shima. That Yamato had no chance whatsoever. So all you can do in that scenario is just forget about it, play the next round. I've been in that position many times. It's just nothing you can do. But uh, what I can do now is be a destruction. I'm on low hit points and that's a Shimakaze. And I don't have a sonar, <laughs> so uh, the only, probably the only, um, the only good, uh, the only advantage I have at this point is that uh, the Shimakaze doesn't know that I don't have torpedoes <laughs> because this is an unreleased ship. So they're assuming, and rightfully so, that I would have torpedoes. So let's just turn and avoid the incoming torpedoes. There they are, Shima Torps. And where's the third spread? There's only two of them. 
Shima, did you have one on cooldown or have you saved one? Okay, we'll more beach at this island here. And then uh, we've, we've already turned the guns around and get... Oh yeah, the, the rear turret, I forgot to mention, is 360. So um, I don't have a secondary overload ready anymore, but this is sort of where the... Yep, there comes some more Shima torps. Oh, he's aimed around uh, along the... He's aimed along the guideline. Yeah, <laughs> that's not going to work because uh, the guideline would show where I was going to go if there wasn't an island in the way. That's why I did that. <laughs> Sometimes people fall for it even at tier 10. Uh, I mean, I, I was gonna die anyway here, either way, so... Uh, let's see. I'm just here to distract the Shimas and keep them away from B Cup, but I think we've got the, we've got the capture points at this point. Okay, um, I am out of heals, I am out of hit points, and I'm out of everything. So we'll, we'll, I've, I've given my destroyers some time to, to join me here. I kept the Shimakazes away. And, uh, yeah, well, if you're coming around like that, then I'm not going to complain, Shima. Got a couple more shots in. Uh, the, the rear turret being 360 is quite nice. Uh, so much smokes up, Shima smokes up. I have no idea where he is. There might be torpedoes in the water, so I'm going to sail away at this point. Uh, that Shima mm, might might get a shot in, yep. Uh, but he, they, now they are in, uh, in close range engagements with with uh, with my destroyers so they don't, hopefully don't have time to drop torpedoes at me or shoot at me because I only have a thousand hit points. These Shimas can gun me down at this point. Oh no, don't shoot at me, don't shoot me. Ah! <laughs> secondaries, secondaries to the rescue. <laughs> I'm gonna kill Bayashima. <laughs> got gunned down by Shima. Did I get him? Yes, I got him! <laughs> Vengeance. <laughs> and that just leaves the, what was it, the Black Shima. And uh, I've got a full health Shima and Somers, so unless uh, unless they both run to, run full health, full spread into oh that's a regular Shima it was the black one unless they both run into those torps, uh, he's gonna lose. So he, he's giving it his best. I'm gonna give him that. That was the best thing he could try. But yeah, uh, so Shimakaza knows that Shimakaza has torpedoes, and Somers uh, has just sailed by. So no chance uh, no chance for that Shima to do anything. Uh, good good on you for surviving. You tried. Um, but yeah, cap control. Cap control is kind of important. So uh, there we go. But uh, yeah, that was a that was an interesting first round, I find. So now I'm going to show you a second one. And the second one is one of those rounds when your stars align and you do what the ship was meant to be do doing. And uh, I'll show you how successful that can be. Oh, we had an AFK Shima and they have had an AFK Fletcher. Oh, well, 6v6 is still not bad. So here we are with a fully decked out uh, Admiral Schröder in the Embarrassing Camo. And we are playing obviously tier 10. Fortunately, no carrier, because carriers can really mess up your day. And we're playing Epicenter in Cage against uh, Jean-Bart, uh, Lyon, a Jinan, a Neptune, Tulsa, Shimakaze and Smallland. Now, I can't remember if the Tulsa has torpedoes. I know that some of these American premium cruisers have torpedoes. It's on the list for review, by the way. So let me start here while I'm talking. It's on the list for review, by the way, because uh, a lot of you have been asking me about uh, these. I'm waiting for the 7.0 7 7 update to see what if any AA changes have been made to these before I go again through the American premium cruiser, uh, cruiser lines. Anyway, I'm spawning with Shimakaze on left flank, secondaries to, uh, to armor piercing. And uh, now here's the thing about Cage, and I'm actually going to reuse this battle uh, for a map tactics video later in the week, <laughs> because uh, be because of uh, just how my, how well it exemplifies how this map works. But um, now I could go in, a, or, or your your battleship tactic would, would be to go into center and and tank, but not in this thing. You're you're in a you're in a cruiser. You don't want to be there. You do not want to be shot off by a Jean, shot at by a Jean Bart. Even by a Jean Bart, you don't want to be shot at. And I forgot what the other one is. Um, something British? Lion? Was it? Can't remember. Anyway, uh, Shimakaze is going left flank, and uh, given that we've got two uh, two DDs, that's not a terrible idea. But he is running into the Tulsa, and this is an American ship, so it's probably got that radar, maybe. I really can't remember what this thing can do. So uh, I'm spotted and he's, he puts up the radar, but he knows that he was spotted. He's not stupid. He knows, he's, he, knows he was spotted, uh, brings up the radar, uh, Shima spotted, immediately secondary overload up. And uh, I am running the engine boost and I'm trying to get through uh, to save my Shima here. And yeah, this means I am going to have to run the gauntlet, but uh, that's an American cruiser and he's now patched against an island and he's now very dead, which means at least that thing is, is out of the way. 
and I, I now I'm in a position to uh, deliver some 150 millimeter armor piercing goodness against the small land over there. Uh, I don't know if the small land's got torpedoes away, but there's Neptune as well. So now I'm committed. Fortunately, only one person is, uh, is, is targeting me, and. Uh, that means I need to get behind the island because uh, uh, there is Neptune. If if Neptune has any sense, I'm dead here. I don't have a sonar, and if Neptune fires single torpedoes at close range, there's no way I'm going to survive this. There's Neptune, so I'm trying to trying to uh, go get in and get the island between myself and him. I don't know where exactly he is. He can sail out from his smoke, uh, drop the single fire torps, and I'm just trying to avoid in the island. Small ants now shooting at me as well. So let's get the salvo out of the small. There's Neptune, yeah. So if he's if he's dropped torpedoes now, I'm very, very dead. So I'm just foot slamming in reverse left, and Neptune has panic dropped, which is perfect, because that means I'm only taking two torpedoes, but now Neptune needs to die before he gets to turn around or just kill me with his guns. And Shimakaze is still out there as well. So I'm gonna use the secondary overload again, because that's the only chance I have to take on the Neptune. But look at that, Shimakaze has been, it's been team working, so as a thanks for um, taking down the two cruisers that were a massive threat to him, <laughs> he did torpedoes the Neptune. Now I'm on 1500 hit points, so I need to hug this island, <laughs> island waifu to the rescue, and get back behind that until I get my, um, until I get a heal off. So uh, I'm not in a terrible position. Uh, we've, uh, I've, comp I've cleared the cruisers off the flank, which means the Shima now has, has a clear run at the battleships. And uh, uh, we should have pretty much have this in the bag at this point. There's an enemy uh, destroyer doing the same thing, but now I'm, I'm in a per perfect position to threaten that small land because now I've got small land in the crossfire. Hello. <laughs> and I'm actually unspotted because I'm still behind the island. Small land is panic smoking and as he should but he's he's at this point he's so low on hit points for my consistent for my consistent bombardment that gearing shouldn't have a huge problem with him uh, jinan is on the other flank and yes our battleships are getting harassed by a um by a destroyer as well but uh i'm not sure what the other cruiser is doing over here when the when the destroyers are on the other side but okay uh, be it as it may other cruiser goes in and i've got a lion so um Going, sitting here and, and waiting or going down in a blaze of glory? I'm in a German battleship. Of course we're going down in a blaze of glory. So let's go. Hello, Mr. Lion. If Lion's got the armor piercing loaded, I'm dead. <laughs> if I've, if, he, if he's, yeah, he's firing HE. Okay, I've got a chance to survive. Yay. And Shima's helping out again. Uh, there a plonk from the Shima, uh, who just killed the Yamato by a fire. And uh, I am now just, uh, I'm now just having fun with that, <laughs> with that Lion over here. Now let's, just, let's see how much damage I can do before I inevitably die, because I'm not going to survive this. I'm out of heals, I'm out of everything, I'm out of secondary overloads, there's fire, there's double fire. I'd be have, I'd have been dead twice over if that thing was firing armor piercing, but it's a British battleship. Hello Jean Bart. Uh, I, I, Jinan, I see you over there. Um, Jinan might have torpedoes away, so I'm going to turn and try to do some damage to the Jinan before maybe I can distract him from my Shima. Uh, John Barr takes me out with the secondaries. Anyway, in the battleship I might have lived a little longer, but not very much. Anyway, this was um, this has relatively comprehensively cleared out the rest of the enemy line, and that just leaves the Jinan. Uh, sorry, Shima, you did really well, um, and uh, great teamwork there. So that was uh, that, that was that was fun. Uh, gearing secured the middle. Uh, one of our battleships has survived. The other cruiser is sailing around. It appears to have taken out the enemy destroyer. Good job there. Uh, love it when the team pays attention and uh, yeah the Jinan survives uh, for for a minute longer but uh, that's that's pretty much game so uh, while we're waiting for this to to roll out uh, the Admiral Schröder um, the battle you've just seen is sort of a one in a million <laughs> I'd say because the stars really have to align between the enemy team just giving you opportunities to make things happen and that's not a good thing. If you have a ship that relies on the enemy team to give you opportunities, uh, that makes generally not for a great experience. So um, I haven't been a massive fan of the O-Class uh, supercruisers to begin with. And this thing, in my opinion, is on the weaker end of it. Now you could argue, Terry, why don't you play this at mid-range? Um, yes, you can. You have good ranges on the, on the secondaries. But uh, honestly, the main guns, just don't cut it very much and um, 
the dispersion is absolutely dreadful. You, you do have no torpedoes and you, you kind of don't want to sail out in the open. You need to play a lot more like a cruiser and rely on your, on your damage output to make things happen when you ambush enemy ships. That said, you have absolutely terrible armor for, for, for a ship that size and that style. So, and you have no torpedoes that you could use. So if I had done the exact same thing that I've just, I've just done, but in the Prinz Ruprecht, that would have been a very different battle. And um, rightfully so, because these torpedoes, I, I would have had a good chance to do uh, maybe an extra 20,000 20, damage pretty easily with. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, maybe this matches your style. Uh, maybe if you enjoy the Aegir, or the Siegfried for that matter, uh, but specifically the Aegir, and you'd be happy to trade uh, to say, um, I trade crappy main guns and um, I trade my torpedoes away for the Prince Ruprecht's 150s, then, uh, and for the Prince Ruprecht's secondaries, really. Then, yeah, okay, go for it. But uh, otherwise, um, yeah, given the price tag for tier 9s, probably not worth it in my personal opinion. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.